Can you tell me like your full name? Manuel Victor Perez. Good job, you passed the first question. Oh, that's it. That's it, we're done. I'm just kidding. That's uh, it. <laughs> I was born May 9, 1927, and I came to the United States uh, about April 29, I think. I was born in Guadalajara. My parents' name was Manuel Perez and Maria Perez. My mother was from uh, Sinaloa, and my dad was from Guadalajara. But one day, my dad was out gallivanting, I guess. He went to Sinaloa and met my mom. And at that time, the, the woman would, would wait on the, on, on the window, and he'd pass by, and little by little, they got to talking to each other, and then he got buried. And we lived in Los Angeles through the Depression. And the Depression was somewhere around 19... 34, 35, 36, around there. And my dad said, no, if you call Pioneer Flintcoat, tell him I want two days work. Two days would give him $20 a week. And for $20 a week, he could feed us. And we didn't have to, he didn't have to uh, take anything free. We lived on uh, Adair and Santa Barbara, and he would walk from there to Hollywood. Take him about an hour. He'd go to Hollywood and, and he would wait her. And when he got through waiting, he'd come home and he'd have complete chickens because in those days, the people did not have a donkey bag. So he'd come in with a couple of chickens. He'd have about four or five pounds of butter. He'd come home and we'd have enough food for the week. <laughs> but anyway, that's how the, the uh, Depression days, we, we got through that. And we never had to take money from anyone because my dad was very proud. He said, if you don't work, you don't eat. How did you, how did you meet Grandma? And grandma, well, what happened is we, we, we used to have, a, uh, I used to get together with all my friends. Oh, that's my wife right there. Oh, that's our, our 50th anniversary. See that? Yeah. This is Celia when, uh, on our 50th anniversary at uh, Sue's house. She, uh, Celia used to belong to uh, uh, ladies, Las, Las Damas. They got, they got together and they invited a, a couple of us so the, all the our club went to meet her club. So when we went to meet her club, it was always at somebody's house. So we were at this house and we were all sitting around and she sat somewhere and I couldn't find a seat so I sat on the side. So little by little I kind of got to like her so I asked her to go out and she went out but I couldn't take her out unless I took her sister. So I took her to the show and I took her sister to the show. But I used to take her mother, the father and the sister. But the theater that was at that time they only paid a quarter, so it was, didn't cost nothing. But anyway, uh, we got engaged and we gave it a year. So for a year, I took her out. How did how did you ask her to marry you? Well, I just asked her if she wanted to get married. She said yes. But first, I asked her father. So I couldn't ask her first. I had to ask her father, and her father said, "Yeah, it's all right with me." Uh, well, we got married, and we started going to the show, we started going to dances, we went out a lot, and, and then finally, after a month, we said, you know what, we, we shouldn't have a baby, because this is, what are we going to do? You know, you got nothing around the house. So we decided to have a baby a month after we got married. So we had a baby right then. Anytime we said we wanted a baby, we had a baby. So two days later, two years later, we had another baby. And after that one, another one, two years later. Two years every week, we had our babies. So I, I would say that uh, love was never 
a day too far. Never. Because that's the only thing I, I that's the only thing I worked for all my life. And and that was it. So we we had uh, we had a good report. And we didn't have enough time to get in fights because I was never home. So it was pretty good. So then little by little my family started going and every time I walked down the aisle, I had the biggest smile. I mean my smile was from ear to ear. So they, my kids all got they got married and I was so happy they got married. And everybody, they all got married and I was all happy. We had good parties. We had a lot of lot of real good parties. And then one day in nine two thousand no in two thousand three my wife had a cold. We were sitting in the back room and she and I said, Why don't we go to the doctor? I don't want you to catch pneumonia. So she went upstairs and all of a sudden I heard a thud and she died. So she died of a heart attack. And then I, I found out that she was taking a heart pill about three or four times a day. And she wouldn't tell anybody. And then I was alone for about six months and then I couldn't sleep. So when you lose your partner, uh, it was just uh, empty. What happened is Josie used to be, worked with us about five years before that. She worked at, at help at one place, her and her husband, her husband. So I knew Manuel, he, him and her worked there. And then we had a Bible study and Josie and us would all go together. Well, when, when her husband died, she would go to church and we'd she all go to the same mass, about 10 o'clock mass. So my wife says, honey, why don't we take Josie for breakfast? So Josie was working with us, but even then, after that, she went to breakfast, we took her to breakfast. Then when we first asked her, she was in the church and we come out and I said, Josie, would you like to go to paradise with us? And she looked at me like I was something else. And I said, no, the restaurant, <laughs> because it was really paradise. It was a restaurant. <laughs> and we started to go to the restaurant every Sunday until my wife died. You're lonely. She said, I'm, I'm, I stay up every night. And I said, you know, I stay up every night. So I would call her at night and we talked to two hours. And, and after 12, we we're on the phone. So I decided, you know, maybe we should get together. So we went out and decided, well, you know, we might as well get together instead of being separate. So we got together and we got married. So now we're going on our 14th year. But, but I'll tell you one thing. There isn't a day that went by that we didn't have either something going on, the family going on, a trip going on. There was something going on all the time. And uh, you can ask the rest of the family. So we were doing something all the time. So we were never at home just sitting around. If we're sitting around, we're gonna have barbecue or something and have somebody over. But we were always had either had company or we were going someplace or something was going on. But there was something going on every day of my life.